Isaac. How are you, Thomas? Fine. Isaac, this is Mr. Pratt from Ohio. He's on his way to Albany. Albany? You're a bit off the beaten path, aren't you, boy? Mr. Pratt is a preacher of sorts. In fact, he will be preaching at my home this evening. He'll join us, won't you? Do you preach the scriptures, young man? I do. Good. I'll be there. Seven o'clock. We'll be looking for you. Mr. Pratt, are your views of the scriptures broad enough to accept such things as visions and the ministering of angels? They are. Come, sit. What is it, Isaac? Last week, I came across a book, a strange book, published down in Palmyra, said to have been originally written on plates of brass or gold by a branch of the tribes of Israel, and discovered and translated by a young man by the aid of heaven. There's even been talk of the ministry of angels. This book, do you have one? Loaned it to my sister. She'll be returning it in the morning, though, if you care to stop by. I will, if it's agreeable. I felt a strange interest in that book. The next morning, I called at his house where for the first time my eyes beheld the Book of Mormon. That book of books. The door's open. It's there on the table. Help yourself. I opened it with eagerness and read its title page. then read the testimony of several witnesses in relation to the manner of its being found and translated. I commenced its contents by course. I read all day. Care for some supper, Mr. Pratt? Eating was a burden. I had no desire for food. Sleep was a burden when the night came, for I preferred reading to sleep. As I read, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me, and I knew and comprehended that the book was true. As plainly and manifestly as a man comprehends and knows that he exists. Do you know what's in this book? I haven't been able to hold on to it long enough to find out. I don't know how to thank you. My joy was now full. And I rejoiced sufficiently to more than pay me for all the sorrows, sacrifices, and toils of my life. I'm on my way to Palmyra. My book. I soon determined to see the young man who had been the instrument of its discovery and translation. I accordingly visited the village of Palmyra and inquired for the residence of a Mr. Joseph Smith. Thank you very much. I found it some two or three miles from the village, near the close of day. Evening. Howdy. Looking for Mr. Joseph Smith, translator of the Book of Mormon. 
Well, he lives in Pennsylvania now. It's about 100 miles from here. I'd be pleased to speak with his father or any member of the family. Well, his father's away on a journey right now, but this is his home, and I'm his brother. Pleased to meet you. My name is Pratt, Party Pratt. Mr. Pratt, Hiram Smith. I informed him of the interest I felt in the book and of my desire to learn more about it. He welcomed me to his house. And since neither of us felt disposed to sleep, we conversed most of the night. His kingdom should be conducted in the last days. These meetings took place every year for four years, until finally when he was sufficiently prepared, the Lord entrusted him with the place. Joseph said that a messenger descended When did this happen? The 15th of May, to be exact. This is a new dispensation, Mr. Pratt. A new commission. Angels have visited the earth. Authority has been restored. And Israel is being gathered a final time in preparation for the second coming of the Lord. How far to your next appointment? About 30 miles. But I'll return when it's finished. Well, please do. I'd be glad to have it. Uh, could you use this? Please, take it. It's a token of our friendship. Thank you. Have a safe trip. I traveled on a few miles, and stopping to rest, I commenced again to read the book. To my great joy, I found that Jesus Christ, in his glorified, resurrected body, had appeared to the ancient inhabitants of the American continent, that he had taught them his gospel and healed their sick, and that many of his teachings had been preserved here, in this book, in purity. I esteemed this book, or the information contained in it, more than all the riches of the world. Yes, I verily believe that I would not at that time have exchanged the knowledge I then possessed for a legal title to all the beautiful farms, houses, villages, and property which passed in review before me on my journey through one of the most flourishing settlements of western New York. Such was the Book of Mormon. Let us take the Book of Mormon, which a man took and hid in his field, securing it by his faith, to spring up in the last days. Let us behold it coming forth out of the ground, branching forth, yea, even towering with lofty branches and godlike majesty. It is truth, and it has sprouted and come forth out of the earth, and God is sending down his powers, gifts, and angels to lodge in the branches thereof. In another time, in another corner of the world, another soul is reached by the influence of the Book of Mormon. This is the true story of Vincenzo di Francesca.
born September 23rd, 1888, in the town of Crateri in northern Sicily. From my earliest years, I was religiously inclined. And at age nine, my grandfather enrolled me in private religious training, where I studied the Old and the New Testaments. La qualcosa avendo veduto tutto il popolo, si postò boccone e disse, Il Signore oh, è sì. Dio. Giuseppe Francesco San Vincenzo, He has a gift. Il pastore will want to be a price of his promise. I profetizzo. And I only. At uh, the age of 12, I was admitted to the Gymnasium Le Clerico, a high school established by a Protestant religious order, where I studied religion for four and a half more years. Meanwhile, my brother Antonio invited me to uh, spend my seminary vacation in America. So, at uh, 17 years of age, I sailed from Naples, arriving in New York on October 12, 1905. Brothers and sisters, this is Vincenzo Di Francesca. There, I met a friend of my brother, Ariel de Bellion, a pastor of the Italian branch of one of the Protestant churches, who engaged me as a teacher to serve members of his congregation. The Savior has said... He was so impressed with my gift in reading the scriptures that he suggested I attend Knox College in New York City. I followed his advice and received my degree as pastor with honors in November 1909. As I think back over the events of my life leading up to a cold morning in February 1910, I cannot escape the feeling that God had been mindful of my existence. A story. A story. Emilio, uh, come in. The signora, he is here. He asks that you come to his hall. He has some matters to discuss uh, about the parish. Grazie. 